All right, here in this Tobacco University video, we're gonna be exploring pheno hunting limitations in regards to cannabis. So while pheno hunting is done quite frequently uh, with many plant types, including cannabis, I'm gonna mention some of the limitations if you are deciding to go down this particular route. So first off, pheno hunting is the, is the basis for selection. So growers have been breeding based on phenotypes for generations and it still works and it's performed to this day. So it's not something that's just completely going away. You just have to be aware of some of the limitations when you do select this method. However, with advancements and other techniques, there are more refined methods for the selection process. They can help speed up the process and allow growers to start looking at um, different aspects or characteristics of plants that may not have been possible uh, years ago go. So first off, with any form of growing, with any form of plant production, documentation is important. You want to be tracking individual selection progression and also the environments that they're grown in. Um, all are important tools to aid in the selection process. And this can, just looking at here, we have the, we have the date, we have the day, we have the drench that was made, any notes, we have some actual samples of leaves. So be sure to kind of document uh, the process because that will help you as a grower be able to refine your technique techniques. Also, have an idea of what traits you are breeding for is this will help the always challenging selection process. You might see something, you might have to change your plans, but at least go into with some idea or some direction as far as what you ideally want to be breeding for. So knowing the environment is also a key factor there. So when pheno hunting, the environment has a great influence on the final product, so this needs to be taken into consideration. Just because something performs well, it does not mean it will always perform well. By knowing the particular conditions that it did perform well in, that might be uh, helpful to the grower or breeder that might be selecting that variety or letting others grow that variety as far as knowing what conditions it may prefer or like to get the maximum production out of it. Now here's a prime example here when we're looking at um, bonsai tree hunters, uh, looking at different phenotype selections. Well, bonsai tree hunters thought they hit the promised land when they went to the beach and found dwarf types of common trees. Dwarf types were becoming very popular in certain times. However, when they brought those trees that were very dwarf in appearance back to the greenhouses to breed them out because they thought they found some unique genetics, uh, they brought those to the greenhouses and they found all the plants grew essentially normally. So why was this the case? That plants that were definitely um, smaller in dwarf, why did they grow normally? Well, this was because the plants were dwarfed due to the environmental stresses, such as water, salt, and wind that those plants were exposed to. And once given the more normal or favorable growing conditions, they then changed their performance. And we see the same example here with here's a bonsai tree in a very small container. Here's a tree growing in a parking lot with a very limited root base. And here's a tree growing that has a much more expansive uh, root base. While these all may be the same variety or type of tree, we can see that the can produce vastly different results. And the same thing, maybe not to this extreme level, is all, can also be seen in cannabis. So you also need to consider what is happening inside the plant. While you may be breeding and making sel selections, growers really do not know what the genetics of their plants are. Establishing the basic lineage can help provide an idea, but once the final end product is produced, it may be wise to get a genetic screen or profile done to determine just how different the new creation may be. So in that this is not meant to be a letdown, but if you think you're breeding something that's really different and unique, at least phenotypically, at least what you can physically see, when you get to that kind of end result or more towards those end results, when you really think you have something unique, getting it genetically screened or profiled might be advantageous, really just to see how unique that plant actually may be. Is it really different and unique, or is it really something that is an influence of the environment and really hasn't changed any of the genetics. It's good to kind of know that before you start mass producing it and spreading it out everywhere, if it's related to your environmental growing conditions or if you really have some very unique genetics.